is data important um, and data structures are important? So it's all algorithms and we went through time complexity and stuff like that. So um, the time complexity of algorithms or even storage complexity, what I mean by the space complexity, how much space we allocate for an algorithm, depends on how you store and process the data okay, that the algorithm needs to run. So for example, a very simple uh, common example that uh, everyone should have come across by now is um, referring to a word in a dictionary. So you have a dictionary that stores the meaning, synonyms of all the words out there. So if you want to search for a particular word, uh, say capital or whatever the word is, uh, Uh, let me type somewhere here, okay, capital. Uh, if that's the name of the word for which you want to get the synonym, one brute force approach is to flip every page of the dictionary and see if you get to have the character C and then the see if there's a capital in that page. But if the dictionary has, say, one million pages, you have to keep flipping every page of the dictionary. And at the worst case, you may have to flip all the 1 million pages before you uh, find that word, right? That's like a brute force approach of searching for a word in a dictionary. But if anyone has searched the word in a dictionary, you wouldn't have done this approach. What you would have done is, you right away, at, uh, when you begin with, you don't know where that word capital is. But you know one basic thing about a dictionary, there's an underlying assumption. What is the assumption? The words in the dictionary are in the sorted order. So that's the key thing. The words, which is the data, is in a sorted order in the dictionary. So you know that, so that you are you apply a strategy which we later will look at in detail. It's called a binary search strategy. So what you do is you open the middle page, roughly middle page. You don't really need to open exactly the middle page, so roughly somewhere in the middle of the dictionary and see what character, the first character of that page is. If it is say M, or, then you know very well, 100% sure that you got M and uh, the uh, word that you are searching for is starting with a C. So if at all the word capital is in the dictionary, it should be... If at all the word capital is in the dictionary, then it should be where? To the left of that M because you got M. So if at all C is in the dictionary, it should be to the left of M. So what you do is you conveniently discard the right half of your dictionary, all the pages to the right of M and decide to search only to the left of M. And again, and, uh, now what you do is your search space, you're going to search one lead in the left half of the dictionary. So in that left half of the dictionary, you open a middle page and see what word comes up there. So let us say you open the left half of the dictionary and let us just hypothetically say you've got something starting with B. Then you know for sure the capital is not going to be the left of B, it's going to be one link to the right of B. So now your search space is getting reduced even further. It was originally the entire dictionary. After the one iteration and you got M as the middle page, you omitted the right half and search only the left half. The second iteration you got B. And now you know th that capital is going to be somewhere in that middle, in, uh, ranging from this page where the B is and this page where the M is. And you're going to search in that half. And keep going, reducing half uh, the search space by half. So even though the dictionary may have one million pages, you're going to search very quickly and find the word capital. And again, don't worry about this time complexity. In, in another course, we'll be doing this. So if the dictionary has, say, n pages, you're going to take logarithm of n to the base 2. So this is the time that you're going to spend to search for a word in a dictionary. And log functions, we saw in the first module, grow very slowly. So that's why you're able to search very quickly um, in any uh, uh, large dictionary. So in order to have get this log time complexity, 
the underlying assumption is very important what the dictionary needs to be uh, sorted the contents have to, have to be in a sorted order if they are not sorted so think about it if a dictionary has all the words in the unsorted order the words are just randomly distributed would you be able to search quick efficiently like we just did uh, if the dictionary has 1 million pages the answer is no right because if the if things are not sorted you don't know where things are so you have to flip every page and search for the word you're searching for so that is why how we store the data is very important to decide the time complexity of the algorithm okay uh, so this is some this is a very good example to understand why data is important and how it is stored is also important okay now another uh, thing you should also uh, uh, know is a difference between what is called abstract data type and data structures so we call abstract data type as adt shortly and then data structure so what's the difference between the two so again to explain the difference let me use this example here so everybody uses a car so we know how to drive a car, we know how to uh, turn on the steering, how to press the brake to stop the car and press the gas pedal to accelerate the car and if you have a manual thing you know how to change the gear and so on. Now all these things are abstract view in the sense that you just turn the steering and the car is turning and you just press the brake the car will stop. Internally you are not concerned about how it, it, it is implemented in the car, how the brake system is working, how the acceleration system is working, how the steering is working. You don't really need to worry about at the time of driving. You just know that if I want to turn, I have to steer, turn it in this particular direction, the car will turn. So that's the abstract view. Whereas whoever built the car is the one, was the one who implemented all these things, all these systems, right? Similarly, when you have say uh, this ADT, ADT gives you an abstract view of the data that, you are pro that an algorithm is processing. So I can think about the dictionary example. Uh, if you want to get the, so you're turning the, you're opening the middle page, right? So what, what you want is, what is the worst, uh, first character of the words that appear in that page? and you call a function that will return that value and um, so what is the value uh, at that particular page you call that function it returns that value uh, so you just simply call the function and you're getting the value so that's like turning the steering wheel and the car is turning so calling the function getting the value of the function processing further based on that return value is just an abstract view how that function is implemented that's the implementation view okay so the ADT when you when you view the data from abstract point of view is called the abstract data type and when you think about implementing the functions that uh, are used to access the data and process the data you are you have to call it as a data structure that's the model the implementation model of an ADT is called the data structure. So this is how you relate the two. How an ADT is implemented, it's the data structure. Okay. So if you go for interviews, you ask you these questions, what's the difference between ADT and data structure? This is probably a good explanation you can give. So ADT is like looking at the data and at an abstract level by just focusing on what values the data can take? Am I, is my data an integer or is it a character or is, is it a double? So you need to know that as a user. And you need to also know what functions I should call on that data to access the data that I am uh, for, for my algorithm. So you need to know all those things. What, value, what data type that function will return and all these things. But that's still an abstract level. You are not bothered about how those functions are implemented. Okay. So that's at the system level or the implementation level. And in this course, we are looking at, we're going to look at the implementation level model of an ADT. So at the data structure level, okay? Uh, and so in this slide, I show the common ADTs we'll look at in this course, and there's also the common ADTs out there, and we're going to look at all of them. Uh, so the ones in red are the ADT names and ones uh, below that are the data structure names. 
So we're going to look at list, stack, queue, all the abstract data types, and or any of these things could be implemented using one of these two data structures. So you could see also this kind of um, uh, what you call uh, um, uh, implementation model, where a list can be implemented as an array, a stack can also be implemented as an array, a queue can also be implemented as an array. Similarly, a list can be implemented as a linked list, stack also as a linked list, and queue as a linked list. So. Uh, one AD, uh, so two different ADTs, a list is an ADT, a queue is an ADT or stack is an ADT. Two different ADTs can be implemented using the same data structure. Like go back to the car example, uh, the internal parts of the say the brake system, two different car models okay, uh, can still be implemented using the same part like the, all the, you know, the key parts of a brake system can be used to implement two different car models, right? So like that two different ADTs can be implemented using the same data structure. So that's something you should also know. And again, the logic that you use uh, to implement those data structures uh, will be different, you know. Uh, if you know a stack and a queue, for example, just the layman definition of a stack and queue, a stack is like what? A last in first start. Like you have a stack of books, you keep piling the books on, on the top of each other. And uh, so that is like you are building the stack. Now if you want to retrieve an element from the stack, what comes out of the stack is the last element you put on the top of the stack. So that's the last in first out. That's the implementation model. So how you implement the, uh, implement the stack using one of these two, that will be the model that will decide how the data structure works. It works as a stack. Similarly, a queue, uh, on the other hand, is going to be like a first in first order, like a grocery store queue. So in a grocery store, the first person who, who, who stood in the queue is the first person who is going to be service. So depending on that model of implementation, uh, using the same array as the data structure, we can get a queue. Okay, so like in the design model of the companies, the model that will be different for each car model. But using the same brake system, you can, depending on how you design that, how you implement that, uh, using the same data structure, the parts will get different car models. Right. So again, we are going to look at all these things in detail as we proceed. So right now, we have to rem uh, just look at get, uh, get a high-level view of what is an ADT, what's the data structure, and this slide that shows different ADTs can be implemented using the same data structure. Likewise, a dictionary, which is an ADT, can be implemented using any of these two data structures, and we'll see all these things in this course. Okay. So let me save this video and check what time is it. Okay, so enough time.